most most manufacturers do not understand most executive leaders of manufacturers do not understand the diversity among the just what we call their data in their business i, I want to talk about this there was point four which was challenges in mainstream adoption of iiot and industry 4.0 so in our in the notes here where we're looking at um you know what it is we should talk about the, when i saw this piece right here you know the challenges in mainstream adoption which by the way all of our content comes from that it came initially when we started producing youtube videos in 2018 and zach tricked me into going up on the whiteboard right you know the whole i was never supposed to be in front of the camera and he tricks me to do this whiteboard video our whole perspective had been around what is it we have observed that people are like if we wanted to teach people don't make these mistakes right like everybody's making the same mistake in the first 12 to 18 months it's literally it's crazy the the number of mistakes that we see over and over and over again our whole perspective was what are the challenges to adopt i mean right now if you go over to the eu and you talk to people in the eu digital they believe digital transformation in industry four mm -hmm. is a failed initiative they believe that it has failed 90 percent of initiatives have failed right but over here in the united states while there are a lot of failures, there are way more wins in the U.S. than there has been anywhere else in the world. And the question is why, right? So what I want to do is ask you to talk, discuss what, from your perspective, what are the challenges and why has mainstream adoption been so slow um, in your, from your wow, perspective? There's a, that's a, that's going to be a lot to unpack. Um, let's, well, let's start with the difference between the EU and America, that's right? Because I'm, I work both sides of the ocean. I'm on both sides of the pond. Right. There definitely is, there's in the EU, there's more of a, they have to see the value before they're ready to go with it, right? They need to, it's kind of like you have a chicken and egg problem. You have to show them before they want to do it. In the US, we're very much open to experimentation, iterations, trying things out, seeing what happens, you know, keeping the cost down on the, on the approach, right? But, you know, it's not a big deal to do an experiment to see. Um, fortunately, uh, we have in our landscape kind of built in a little bit of both, right? You know, so we've got an ability that we play with things and we prove it out and then we see what we can do with it further down the path. So I think that's why in our organization, it's, it's kind of taken hold because we've been able to, for those in the EU, we've been able to show them the value of what they need, but we've been able to do it in some iterative approaches with some, some partners that were very willing to do so. Um, you know, so it's because we're tackling the problems that they've been having forever. Um, you know, if you look at uh, lean manufacturing, mm -hmm. it's hit a brick wall, right? You know, there's only so far you can go with lean manufacturing without getting digital. Uh, and as soon, yeah, exactly. It's a plateau, right? It just stops because all of those questions that they can't answer are because they're not digitized. And as soon as they get the data from the digitization, right. then they start going again, right? Those questions that they've had for 20 years, finally, they can see insight and get answers because they've got the data. Um, so that, those are, that's the other thing that, that we approach with it. Um, I would say that the expectations in the EU were too high, that they thought everything would just be magical and it's, whew, you know, away we go. And that's not the way things happen. I mean, like I, like I said earlier, I mean, we've been doing this for five years and we just now are at the point where we've got enough data to really start doing some interesting machine learning, some interesting AI stuff. We're starting to get some contextualization of data for different right. points. I mean, it takes a long time. If you've not started this or you're not digital in some way, or if you've been traditional IT, everything's on one side of a fence and nobody's touched it never, it's going to take time. It just is. Um, that's another big reason. You, you know, you know what? I, I say this, becoming digital, digital transformation, net, yeah. first off, it never ends. It's a strategy. Like when, you know, there's a, a a lot of conversations out there about, you know, the ultimate, you know, the ultimate guide to digital transformation, or this is how it should be done. No, digital transformation is a strategy. Part of the reason you're failing is because you think it's, it's a project that ends, it's over, and all of a sudden, you're digital. No, no, no. digital is the way you operate your business. Like it's a it's a mindset, it's an approach, it's a strategy for the way you operate your business. If you were to go ask Tesla, who has a digital maturity score of 87, that's the highest in the world out of a scale of zero to 100. The next closest is an 82 or an 83. And by the way, at that at that end of the, the distribution, the 82 to 87 is is 100 miles. I mean, it's a huge distance, right? As opposed to on the mean, 50 to 51 really is just mm -hmm. one point, right? 
at 82 to 87, two standard deviations from the mean, that is a, that's a hundred miles, right? Even, even the folks at Tesla would argue, we are, we don't think we're as digitally mature as we can be. Why? Because they know that they're still iterating to a path where a lot of business decisions that they currently make manually will, they won't, the, the artificial intelligence will help direct them mm -hmm. to, uh, on that decision, right? But one of the things that we talk about all the time, and I think this is a, a, a very common misconception in our industry is the importance of understanding that there's only so much you can know when you have to, when you collect all your data manually on paper, when you are, when you don't have insight into mm -hmm. every single event, rising edge and falling edge in your business. And that's what being digital is. You guys are right on, you know, there's, it happens in two steps. Step number one is becoming smart. Connect, collect, store, analyze, visualize, find patterns, report, solve, yep. right? That's that first step. You guys, mm -hmm. that takes three to five years. And you guys, you guys are literally the, 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 the example, right? Three to five years to become smart. Then it's plugged into a digital supply chain, right? So then it's plugged into a digital supply chain. And now I'm connected to uh, suppliers that I don't currently work with. And I'm connected to all my customers and all the p potential addressable market. Mm -hmm. You guys are right on course. Most people don't know. When I say that first phase takes three to five years, they, mm -hmm. most of them are shocked. I'm like, listen, you need to be prepared. This is a journey. Mm -hmm. This is a journey, right? But anyway, I didn't mean, but it, other challenges well, as think, you see I it. I think and then the, we'll, we'll the take whole topic got lost with a lot of buzzwords and a lot of um, uh, just startups, you know, good people out there. But honestly, it just kind of muddied the market. You know, you got uh, the big guys saying they could do it. You got small guys jumping up saying they can do it. Everybody says, oh, we can do the whole thing for you. Uh, and I think that kind of misled a lot of executive teams that they didn't really understand what it was because you know from an external perspective they're going well everybody says it's easy and from an internal perspective those of us who actually were in the weeds we're looking at it going yeah okay there's no way in hell that's just not going to happen i don't know what they're talking about um and, and i think that right. really kind of it really damaged the whole um the whole path for a lot of people i i think you know the it, i think it's going to revive i mean i think that the whole topic's not gone away those of us that have been kind of continuing to stump on and do what we needed to to digitize um, and I, and I, I listened to your MEP thing the other day, and I very much am in the same boat. You know, I was when I was giving speeches three, four years ago, I was saying, you know, if you haven't started yet, you're not too far behind, but you can start now. But I would never say that again today. I would say, like, if you haven't started yet, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you, you guys are you guys are going to spend multi million dollars yeah. to catch up. I mean, it's not going to be easy. Um, what did. What did you think I thought of the great. mass I thought MEP? It was spot keynote. on. Um, I I, <laughs> I find it shocking to listen to Walker because it sounds like I'm listening to myself sometimes, um, which is really weird. But I, you know, I mean, verbatim, he will say things that I've said or things that I have made in presentations. Um, and, and no offense, and I I hope to God you don't think that I'm borrowing from you. I don't. It's just it's the way I think. You know, I'm I'm saying the same things you are. Um, I think it was spot on. I hope that you guys had a good response there because it, that was the right market that they need to hear those words. Um, you know, that's a roadshow that probably should be at every single state level uh, manufacturing partnership group that they they all need to hear this right now. I, I think I will say this: um, the the former lieutenant governor of Massachusetts was there, and he's now the he's yeah, yeah. the chamber of commerce guy, or he, he's the president. He's the yeah. president of the Massachusetts Chamber of Commerce, but he is the former lieutenant governor. He spoke right before me and um, and I referred to him in the speech. We actually tried to cut most of it so that it didn't look yeah. like I was throwing shade at him. But he talked about in Massachusetts how education like, you know, they have world class education there. Right. World class academics, world class intellectuals. All true. But my point was, I'm going to demonstrate how poor of a job intellectuals and academics do in conveying ideas to people on the plant floor. And when, and literally when I asked the digital, does anyone have any idea how to do, there was not a single person who raised their hand on any of those three questions, N not a single person. And, and the reality is Tom, to your point, one of the things that blows my mind about executives that executives don't struggle with learning is they, when they hear PLC or they hear machine or they hear, cell or work center, they, they believe, I think in their head, they're all the same, right? You, I worked for Newcore Steel. You were yep. in the steel, you were in yep. the steel industry, right? I worked for Newcore Steel. 
I was a, I was a controls engineer at Newcore Steel. I worked in the rolling mill. We also had a melt shop. The total engineering team was something like 10 to 12 people, right? And we all worked under the same leadership. We all, and you could tell, you could literally walk through our process, connect to a PLC, and you know mm -hmm. exactly who wrote that program. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I oh, hope he, Ron wrote I that. hope they had a good oh, day. Phil I wrote. hope it wasn't like a hangover right. Monday or something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Everyone yeah. uses their own naming conventions. Everyone, you, and what most people don't understand is that when you want to become a digital company, and you're going to extract that data from this equipment, the the naming convention, the structure, the add-on instructions, the user-defined data types, the, the the function blocks you choose, the parameters you define, mm -hmm. all of those things matter. And you literally, at a very basic level, you have the wild, wild west in the vast majority of manufacturing operations. And if you ask them, hey, now you don't want to be over standardized because then it, it it stifles innovation, but you have to have some standardization, right? Most most manufacturers do not understand, most executive leaders of manufacturers do not understand the diversity among the just what we call their data in their business. The vast majority have no idea. They And that's why they think, I think they think this should be easier than it actually is.